Okay, now that you've finished creating a block with the corner, let's try and create a block with the chamfer. This block's going to be a little bit bigger. It'll be two inches by two inches by two inches. And this time we're going to put a half inch chamfer on the top. And we're going to start at a different position. So we're going to go over further too. All right, let's go ahead and go to Katia. This is the last part we built. Let's build the next part. Again, you should be very comfortable at this point on how to create a brand new part, how to set the part body as the in work object, and getting into the YZ plane for a sketch. I'm going to slide this down. You should be comfortable moving that axis out of the way. And I'm going to use the rectangle command, and I'm going to put my cursor here, and you see where it says two and two, and the tool palette also says where you're at. It gives you your coordinate location. So I could type in 2 2 or I could just click on that spot for 2 and 2. And I could move this over 2 and up 2. And there's a rectangle at 2 and 2. In the tool palettes it shows that the coordinates from the absolute axis, the yellow axis in the bottom left corner is 4 and 4. Which would make sense if my square is 2 and 2. And it's also dimensioning the width and height of the square in there. So you see the width and height in the tool tablet is at 2 and 2. Can't move my cursor over there, otherwise it will keep changing the numbers. But again, in that little window uh, right above the uh, right above the shoot, I just clicked on it. So that's your 2 and 2 inch um, square. Let's go ahead and do a constraint. Oh, sorry. We're going to do a chamfer. And I'm going to chamfer this line and this line here. And the length is a half inch by 45. If I just click a position, do you see how it's giving me the hypotenuse? I don't want the hypotenuse. That is very difficult in the shop to figure out a half inch chamfer that way. You got to imagine if you're in the shop and you wanted to cut something, normally what you would do is you'd measure over a half inch and uh, pretend like you're on a chop saw. You take your chop saw and you rotate it 45 degrees. You find that little mark and then you chop your part off. That's doing the chamfer. So when you do the chamfer command, you want to make sure not to be using in the tool palette. Uh, we want to do trim all elements, sorry. We want trim all elements on there, but when you select this line here and this line here, we want to not be in the hypotenuse and angle. Okay, and it doesn't even show up until you've committed and selected the two lines. So once that comes up, you can then select this one over here, which is first length and then an angle. So the first line you pick is going to go a half inch along that line and then 45 degrees. In fact, if I type in 0.5 here, oh shoot, but you got to be careful not to move it on the screen and hit tab, it'll create, whoops, did I not switch that? Let me hit undo, try that again. The chamfer command, I'm going to select this line here and then this line over here. You got to make sure that we're in this one here. First length and angle. Change that first length to a half inch and then the angle is set to 45. So I can hit enter. Notice that the difference is the original block, that intersection point, it went over a half inch and then chopped it at a 45 degree angle. And then I like to just click on these and move it out here just to get it out of my way. Okay. Now, I'm going to reference the preferences again. Under my legacy preferences, under mechanical design and sketcher, if I have create geometrical sets, uh, just create the ge geometrical constraints, create the dimensional constraints on, that would be the reason for these dimensions coming on automatically when I create that chamfer. When I open up the part body and hit my sketch, you see the constraints here are not just the angle I created, 
and that offset that it created, the coincidence it creates, okay, locking that up as an intersection here, and then also these parallelisms, which I mentioned earlier, are parallel to the horizontal vertical axes. So when I slide this down here, you've got parallelism. When I click on parallelism one, that's the bottom line. That little blue dot is an H. The H means parallel to this horizontal axis down here. Okay, so the two H's are parallel to this horizontal axis. The two V's are parallel to this vertical axis. And that's where you're getting those constraints. I will add another constraint on the bottom line. And I will add another constraint on this vertical line. Okay, I'm going to slide this over here because I want to show you what happens when I do another chamfer on a line that's already been dimensioned. Okay, it gives you this warning thing. You're just going to have to commit to it and say yes. Now, notice that time I didn't give it the value first. Okay, and then order of selection is going to matter on whatever it gives it to you. In this case, it's not mattering too much because it's a half inch and a 45 degree angle. So we'll select this and change it to a half inch. Does anybody know why this is still um, black and not green? Well, first thing I should have done before constraining this, I forgot, go to analysis when I was done with the shape and go to sketch analyze and verify that it's all closed off. Knowing that the profile is closed off, I will not have any problems with my constraints. But it does say under constrained still. Why is it under constrained? I still haven't established this line and this line as my datum. Now, did you notice it shift? I'm going to show you how to get around that. I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to go to constraint and I'm going to constrain to this axis to hold it at two inches. And I'm going to constrain, again I'll hit constraints, and I'll constrain this vertical line to this vertical axis. See, notice it's not at two inches, so I hit two. This part is fully constrained right now. So when I go to try and apply my datum under the dialog box, the second one, constraints defined dialog box, I turn on fix and I turn on horizontal or turn off horizontal and I select OK. This goes red saying, hey, we're over constraining now. You've you've told me to lock this at two uh, I, to dimension this at two inches, but make it so I can modify it. But this anchor says I can't modify it. This anchor says it has to stay where it's at. Okay, so that anchor. I wish I could zoom up on it and make it bigger for you, but that anchor there is making this value here turn red. So I can double click on this and make it a reference callout and select OK. When I make that a reference callout, I know that that line is two inches to here, but the datum here is controlling that line being locked where it's at. Okay, so again, if you select this line and you come down here and you choose the dialog box and you select fix and turn off the vertical, and select OK, this dimension goes red. Do you remember what to do to fix that? You simply double click this, turn on reference. Once you get that reference turned on, it will put parentheses, as you see in the previous one, around that constraint. It means it's a reference call out, letting me know that from this vertical line to this edge is two inches, but I can't modify that. It's just letting me know that's what it is and these datums are establishing those lines being locked into place. Now when I 
dimension this. Or when I analyze this, we've already checked that it's closed. And now it says constrained. Okay. This part is complete. It kind of looks ugly. So what I'll do is make these dimensions here line up. This actually should be, whoa. This line here should be somewhere between 3 eighths to a half inch away from that line. So I'll just go a half inch to make it easy for you guys to see. And I want to line up these two arrowheads. This should be lined up arrowhead to arrowhead representing a chain dimension. Okay. This one also. Well, this one over here should be a half inch out. Okay, and then this one should be a quarter inch away. So the distance between these two dimensions should be a quarter inch. All right, and then this dimension here should be lined up with this one. So it's nice and clean. All right, I would have this one here should be a half inch to three eighths of an inch off. I'll just line it up like the other ones. I want to put this half inch dimension so it looks aesthetically pleasing in the center. This is a cluster of a mess, so I'm going to move this constraint out. Okay. All right. So the the uh, 45 degree chamfer is just how it did it on the uh, Sketcher automatically. So we're just going to ride with what the system did automatically. You should have a zoomed up shot of that. Remember to make your Word doc with the snapshot showing me this tab is a isolated or sorry is a fully constrained profile. I know it's constrained because it's green and it's telling me it's constrained. I also want to do another snapshot with this one active, letting me know that there's a closed profile and I don't have any duplicate elements underneath I'm not seeing. Once you've got those snapshots done, you can go ahead and exit out of the Katia and create your pad. Your pad is under the model tab and there's your pad icon. When I click the pad icon, remember we're changing the length here in the pop-up window to two. It's already highlighted in blue. You don't need to highlight it or click in the area. Just type in two. And remember the trick, don't hit enter, hit the tab button and you can see what's going on. Notice the dimensions are in the back. Do you recall what I, we did? to have the dimensions or constraints show up in the front. I hit the invert, so I'll move this over here. Hopefully it'll be a little bit easier to see. You can use the invert command to invert the direction of the extrusion, or you can use this arrow to invert the direction. I like to hit preview, see what it looks like. Notice all the constraints are right on the front. It's going to be a lot easier for me to select, click on it, and it's a lot uh, prettier to have all of my constraints lined up over there, making it easy for someone to modify, especially yourself. So I select OK. This part is now complete. You can make a picture. Zoom up. Oh, so what I want you to do is go to view, go to the ISO view, and then hit fit all in. And it'll zoom up on that part. To make it zoom up even closer, what you can do is open the axis, hide your absolute axis. When I hit fit all in, watch, it will get even closer to the part. Okay, so we've just now successfully created a solid from our sketch. If you recall the next step, we went to tools and we went to measure item. And we measured the length of the part the width of the part. Oh, I grabbed the face. That's giving me the area. I'll try and grab that edge again. Now, if you got measurements you don't want, you can click on it and hit delete. Click on this and hit delete. Go to measure item. I'm trying to grab that bottom line only.
Okay, so I just rotate it around. See if I can see how the whole face here is highlighting. I'm trying to get just that bottom edge. You now is that? All right. Sometimes it's a pain grabbing an edge. So what you can do is just do measure item or between. Grab your edges, and then move your dimension down by grabbing this line. Sometimes it's a pain because it gets in your way. What happened was it just accepted that measurement. Sometimes that will happen to you and it won't allow you to move it. So I'm going to hit cancel and just try again. Under measure item or between, I'm going to try and grab this edge. This edge I'm struggling with. Let's see if I can grab just that edge and then grab just this edge. Sometimes it's easier to click here and then come back here and try and grab that edge and move that. Okay. And then I like to just move that right over here, right on that. Okay. I'll have to do the same thing. Oh, by the way, dang, I forgot to mention this. Keep measure must be on when you're doing measurements. Okay. So make sure you have keep measure on in the tree here. I'll grab the bottom line and the top line. Let's say okay and then try and create another one here. Measure between. I'm going to try and grab this bottom line and the top line. I'll click that over there just to get out of the way. Move this here. And then I'll come back and move this over here like so. Now I know the length, width, and height of the part. So the tricky part is how do I get the half inch dimension? Because there's no edges there to pick on. I'm going to change the first, I'm going to select OK and then create measure between. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to grab this line here and this line over here. And it's giving me a distance of zero. But I'm not really looking for the distance between those two lines. I'm looking for an angle. So to get the angle dimension, we want to customize this by hitting the Customize tab and turning off the distance and turning on the angle. Okay, so in the Customize tab, you want to have angle turned on and distance turned off. Your map, your window should match mine. There's a blue check for angle and no check for distance that has been taken off. Notice that it switched it to 135 degree angle. I'll select OK. And I can click on this and just kind of move it out so you can see. The supplement to 135 is 45 degree angle. So that will be fine and we can confirm that that is a 45 degree angle. Now I want to create a measurement from this surface to this edge. So what I'm going to do here is go to measure between and I'm going to pick infinite geometry. So when I pick infinite geometry, when I grab this face, instead of it being limited to its face, it's like I'm grabbing this entire plane. Wherever this plane sits, it's infinite. So when I grab this line, it tells me the angle is zero. That is correct. That is a zero angle. So remember what we have to do to fix that? Customize and turn angle off and distance on. And notice now I can see my minimum distance of a half inch. I'll select OK. I've got all my measurements on the screen now. I've identified length, width, and height. I've identified the angle of the chamfer and where the chamfer came from from the corner. So if you're in the shop, you're going to start with a block of material. And I want to chamfer this edge off at a half inch. I can do that by simply going into, uh, I would do that by simply measuring from the corner of the part a half inch over and using my chop saw to chop it at 45 degrees. Now, 
Maybe you're looking at this and thinking, hey, this half inch is kind of big. I wish it were smaller. I wish it were three eighths of an inch. You cannot double click this and change it because this is a measurement. This is telling you what is. It's like you step on your scale and whatever it says your weight is, is what it is. You can't adjust your scale and dial it down and then re-step on it and then that's what you're going to weigh. You're not going to weigh less, right? So in order to actually modify the part, does anybody recall what we do? Again, anytime you want to modify anything like a TIA, you double click. I double click the surface of the solid and all those measurements came back. I can double click the half inch value and change it to 3 divided by 8. If I hit tab, it calculates that for me in decimal form to 3.75. When I select OK, you notice that this part's going to be changed to 3 eighths of an inch. That is the beauty of being able to modify things on Katia. It's so easy to just modify your constraints. Again, I'll click the other 0.5 on the other side and do 375 and hit tab. And then hit OK. You can see it's making its change. Now watch the value. The 135 angle should stay the same. But this minimum distance should change to 0.375. When I select OK, it does indeed change to 0.375 automatically. How does it know to do that? Again, these are the things we're setting in our legacy preferences. In our legacy preferences, preferences under parameter measure, using the measure tool, because we're using measure between or measure item, that is the measure tool, we have turned in automatic update. If that were not turned on, and I were to have worked without this active, and I had double clicked the solid, and change this two inch dimension to three inches and said okay that measurement won't change okay the reason why it changed now I think it was because it was already on at the time of creation so if that was not on it wouldn't know to make those measurements change I'm gonna hit undo and put it back to where it was I'll grab that line just slide it off the part and I'll grab this line here and slide it off the part. Okay. So, again, I'm trying to show your legacy preferences why we're doing what. We will again go to View tab in the bottom. Hit the ISO view. Fit all in. Uh, it's a little too small. I'm going to zoom up manually a little bit. Make your screenshot of that picture with your measurements in the specification tree. Okay. Last step to apply material. Under model, sorry, under tools, the material browser is on the bottom somewhere in the middle most likely. You're going to look for your material browser. We will again use 6061 T6 aluminum. Select on your aluminum part and then apply that material. Again, you're waiting for it and it's waiting for you. I'm waiting for it to close and it's waiting for you now to pick on this top collector in the tree that I have highlighted in blue. If I wasn't explaining to this to you, I don't know why or how you should intuitively know to pick on that part of the tree, but you need to. So I pick on that part of the tree and it allows me to hit the uh, close to confirm the material. I've confirmed that this T6061 material has been applied. Now, another thing you can do, well, first off, what you want to do is um, click on the inertia button. Remember to hit part body, expand your tree, for your inertia, open that up so you can see area, volume, mass, and so on. And also you can see this part body, um, part measurement, uh, measure inertia stuff all in here in this tree. Make a snapshot with all that on. Or you can hide your measurements 
and then just make a snapshot with just this part of it showing okay try and make it as big as you can so I can see everything alright so again you can make an individual snapshot of the inertia and an individual snapshot of your measure or you can try and cram them all into one thing hopefully it's readable for me if it's not readable you might have to break it up alright that concludes what you need to do for the exercise let me take this a step further and pull my measurements out oh no I don't need to see my measurements what I wanted to show you was under view in the tabs on the bottom you have measure, uh, shading many different ways to shade we can shade by applying with material and then it will look like an aluminum now it's already gray so it's kinda hard to see but it's kinda shiny looking that's supposed to represent your aluminum so let's try this let's go to view uh, sorry tools browse and there's materials that may show up and you can change the different materials I don't know if I have any wood in here there's this um, there's different colors let's see if I can type in a wood see if it finds any wood materials okay just uh, wood roof let's try this one I'll click on this hit the down arrow and hit apply close the window off now it's going to change here notice that in the tree it's still 6061 but if I click on this blue part of the tree if I hit the check mark it's gonna replace it with wood okay and now you see kind of a grain here alright again how I did that was I went to my browser I typed in wood to search for wood I'm gonna do this for wood see what it looks like hit the down arrow and apply that wood close this off pick on the blue part right away here and hit oh check mark oh yeah that's that this looks like the old 70s floor of wood there so you can change your material types by using your material browser um, you can type in metal you can type in plastic there's uh, several different types of things you could try and search for um, I kinda like this rosewood where it kinda shows grain so I will apply that one close this off select that and hit the check mark you'll see that oh the rosewood got added hmm I didn't know I could do that let's see if I can delete I've had problems before where it wouldn't let me delete the material out I'm just trying to see if I can right click on this and delete any of this material out okay so you have to I guess when I go from metal to to wood it just knows but if I'm gonna change wood to a different wood you have to delete it from the tree go to your tools and then find oh it jumped me to assembly design up here hmm that's something to be aware of it switched to it switched me to assembly design so I don't have the same features I gotta switch back to part design so you always want to watch up here in the top and make sure you're actually working in the workbench you think you're in. Oh boy. I'm going to just if you double click on that part it'll take you back. Sorry. Just double click on this and it'll take me back to part design. And let's try and apply that 
uh, material again. I'll search for a wood. I've never even used this wood. Let's see what this one looks like. Apply that. Close this off. Click on this part and then accept it. And now you can see there's wood with grain on it. Okay. So these are always kind of fun. Uh, the other thing I forgot to mention, I was meant to show, I knew I was going to forget this. This will automatically update your inertia. Now your area will be the same and your volume will be the same. But depending on the material you apply, your weight obviously is going to change if it's a metal or a wood. So that's another nice feature. It's just automatically going to know to update that normally. Sometimes it won't update that. And what you have to do is you have to delete it out and then recreate it. Recreate your inertia if it's not updating. Okay. All right. That concludes this demo. That should help you get this part here completed. So we've created a block with the chamfers. We entered a sketch again. We created a sketch. We constrained it. We created the... Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Um, sometimes while I'm talking, I forget to do things. This sketch here, we were supposed to expand the tree, expand the constraints, and rename this. Okay, so what you do is you right click and go to properties. Change that to. Remember you have your up and down arrows? Oh, shoot. It will remember the last things you typed. At least it used to. I'm going to change that to A. And this fix over here, right click. Go to properties. I'm going to use my up arrow. Change that C to a B. Oops. That's got to be all caps. Everything in tool does our engineering tech is caps. The snapshot should have had your datums in there. So make sure you get your snapshot and your datums. I think I did it right in the first video and then forgot in the second video. So that's the datums. We did that sketch analyze. You guys made pictures of your analysis to show me closed and constrained. We were able to create the solid and apply material. We applied multiple different types of material and showed you where to find the shade mode so that you can shade it looking like material. We've applied inertia. All right, we've got our measure parts and all that. You've got your pictures. Submit it to this and you'll be done with this exercise. Just one more time when I exit out a sketch here. Don't forget, if you want to shade the material to show it looking like the material, you must use shading with material. Okay, hopefully you had fun with that exercise, and you can really uh, get, go ahead and move on to the next exercise.